Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk about micronations, another fascination of mine. So micronations are essentially small, unrecognized nations. The difference between a micronation and, say, a country uh, like the Vatican, which is essentially a micronation, is that a micronation does not have support from other recognized nations, recognized on the international stage. The easiest way to think about it is, say, the United Nations is a list of recognized nations, so countries that recognize the presence of each other and their borders and their passports and the fact that you are a citizen of one or another nation, while a micronation is like a little uh, small one that was created maybe for idealistic reasons or due to just someone having a beef with their local government or some guy in his backyard because he felt a little bit crazy that day. So they are not recognized by the big boys. They want to play in the big boys, but they can't play with the big boys because the big boys won't let them in. However, they can play among each other. And every now and then in history, one of these little guys somehow worms his way into becoming one of the big boys. So I have a real fascination with micronations because, well, they're small, bizarre, and off the side, and I'm fascinated in things which are not generally considered normal by the majority of people around the world. Um, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, doesn't matter. Anyway, eight years ago, a micronation came into existence called Liberland. Now, Liberland was basically founded in, uh, well, it was founded between Croatia and Serbia. And if you go to the Wikipedia article, it's got it here. Liberland, also known as the Free Republic of Liberland, is an unrecognized micronation in Southeast Europe, claiming an uninhabited parcel of disputed land on the western bank of the Danube. And it was founded by this guy right here. And when this country came into existence, this micronation, there was like a, a real uh, interest among specific segments of the Esperanto community who wanted to be able to push Esperanto into the constitution of this new micronation. Uh, and that's where I kind of got interested and I was like, well, what's going over here? And I actually connected with the leader of this new micronation on LinkedIn and via email and chatted with him quite a bit. Uh, so I can claim to be uh, friends with, you know, a world leader. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, anyway. So I connected with him, spoke a little bit. Uh, in the end, what happened was that Esperanto didn't get into constitution. English got in and also uh, Czech, which is his native language, which I guess makes sense. But Liberland was an interesting case because it was started by a politician, someone who actually understood politics, uh, and he managed to make a fair few contacts around the world and even kind of get like support in written ways from other politicians in other countries, primarily ones that belong to libertarian groups, so in Poland and America and stuff like that. And Liberland really grew online, so it's primarily an online nation, although they have managed to actually have physical material infrastructure and support and buy and establish things. But I primarily forgot about Liberland for a long time. But every now and then, every six months, I would get a comment on my YouTube channel, such as this one here, which came in eight day days ago. Liberland did not disappear, alive and well, long live Liberland, that was left on one of my videos. And I was like, okay, well, I guess it's time to dive into the, uh, the history of micronations, or at least the ones that fascinated me. So the first micronation on that list, because we're not just gonna talk about micronations, uh, no, we're not just gonna talk about Liberland, is the Principality of Hutt River. And this was, this one holds a special place in my heart. For one, it's in Australia, in Western Australia, or I should say it was, long live the Hutt River province. Uh, what happened was it was founded by this guy here, Leonard uh, Casely. And at the time in the 1970s, he was basically the head of like a farming family, uh, but he was like the patriarch of the local farming community and they, they grew wheat, okay? And they grew a lot of wheat. But due to something happening on the international markets, I believe it was due to like a saturation or something, the Australian government decided that we're gonna put quotas on the amount of wheat farmers can sell. And it, was, it came out of like left field and it would have basically bankrupted these farmers if they followed these new legislated quotas about what they could sell because they had so much debt. They, they said in an article I remember reading that if they followed the quotas, they wouldn't even cover the cost of removing the wheat that they would have to remove as a requirement of that quota. So basically, it would not have only bankrupted them, it would have further indebted them. So they went to the courts, uh, nothing was really resolved, and the leader of this community, the patriarch, I suppose, Leonard, he had um, a lot of interest in and knowledge of British common law, and British common law actually plays a foundational part in Australian law, 
and he found very old laws regarding secession and basically declared that this community would succeed from the rest of Australia and he made it very public and he wrote to the Prime Minister's office and the Prime Minister's office kind of like we don't know if it was jokingly or by mistake, but they responded using his official titles, which gave him some form of legitimacy. And then there was all this stuff backwards and forwards with the local government. And what ended up happening in the end is, I believe, that quota stuff, it was kind of ignored for them. But at the same time, the local government always just took him as like an interesting oddity that helped drive tourism in the area because uh, tourists came to visit the location. They sold uh, passports and, you know, coins and they set up like a little museum on the properties there. It was all very fascinating. But for me, the most interesting thing was that they set up a constitution which contained as official languages English, French and Esperanto due to the support that they got internationally. And I remember at one stage they reached out to me because they wanted to translate their website into Esperanto. By the way, if you haven't seen their website, it is this bad boy right here. This is clearly a modern website of a large international government. But unfortunately, what happened was, I believe a year or two ago, probably two years ago at this stage, the leader, that Leonard guy, um, he passed away. But before he passed away, he passed on the, uh, I guess, what would it be like the lord, not, not lordship, like the, he basically declared that his son would be the new sovereign. And as soon as he passed away, his son sold off all the lands. And that was the end of the, the whole principality, I guess, as you can see what's on their website on the 30th. 1st of January 2020, actually it was three years ago, we made the very difficult decision to close the borders of the Principality of Heart River. So it, unfortunately, I never got to visit the place before it closed down. I actually intended to go one day because of my fascination for micronations and I just wanted to see like what it looked like over there. Like I saw plenty of pictures of the place. In fact, uh, they might still have pictures on their website. Calendar of events, I'm pretty sure that's gonna be empty. Planning a visit. Um, yeah, this was always fascinating. They actually had a royal, uh, like, cannon club, but it was located, I believe, in America. So they had a military arm, which was in America. Don't know how that works, but as you get it. And here there you go. They've got the French language version of their website, the English one, and Esperanto was meant to be over here on the right, but our boy, Evil Deer, failed to translate it. Okay, so now I want to jump back across to Liberland because recently on LinkedIn where I'm connected with the founder, I saw that there was some type of national calamity. So let's go check out the Liberland official website. So as you can see here, that's the article I believe it is. Yeah, this is it. So this is the news article that's come out on their website. So they're like, brutal. Croatia invades Liberland. This sounds pretty serious. Okay, let's check it out. So. On the morning of Thursday, the 21st of September, a private company under the orders of Zupan, the uh, prefecture inspector acting on behalf of the Croatian forests, made an unannounced extraterritorial extra incursion. <laughs> Almost said extraterrestrial. Imagine that. There's like aliens coming in to invade Liberland. You know, this is where they've... In all the Hollywood movies where the aliens always come to America first, no, they came to Liberland. Anyway, so there was a... Extra, extra territorial incursion into Liverland and demolished and removed Liverland property, which does sound pretty serious. Liverlanders living on the land were threatened with arrest if they interfered. Notice here, we've got this Liverland person, they're wearing like their, um, I guess it's kind of a, the cloak and the Liverland flag. This so reminds me of like every now and then when you go to an Esperanto event, you'll have the guy, the guy's usually me by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but he's wearing like a green cloak and he's got like an Esperanto flag and he's like Esperanto and it's like the Verde de Papa which is like the green Pope in Esperanto and he's like the one that everyone avoids because he's just so over the top about Esperanto even the Esperantists don't want to deal with him I'm wondering if she's like the Liberland version of that and do they have like a word for that like someone who's like overly the top four supporter of Liberland anyway Croatian police escorted the demolition crews who committed this act of indiscriminate destruction. The assault was committed without warning and without the forest company and police issuing any reasons or justification. Persons present were not given any time to gather their own belongings, much less their equipment. Thankfully, no one was injured, but our property was damaged and confiscated. So apparently this is what was destroyed. Two well-constructed garden houses and one marina house one well-constructed, fully functional field kitchen and multiple refrigeration units and stores. Like, I've noticed that they've used this word well-constructed twice now. Generally, when I have a field kitchen, which I don't have, I would just say, 
one field kitchen was destroyed or one garden house was destroyed. There's only two reasons why you're like emphasizing well-constructed. One, because you want everyone to know that you weren't violating any local laws and this thing was good, it was sweet. Or two, it totally was not sweet and it was like a real hazard. Anyway, generators and electric equipment, quad bike, bicycles, transportation, food and other supplies, personal belongings. So it appears what actually happened, oh there's a good little map, is that the police from Croatia came with the this private company. It looks like some type of uh, private Croatian forest, again, no, it came with Croatian forests and they basically just packed up everything. So it reminds me of like here in Tasmania where you've got like the Greenpeace protesters on the um, forestry land and the forestry come in with the police and just like kick them all out type of thing. Now, you guys are probably thinking that I'm like, I'm basically dissing the hell out of Liberland right now. I actually love micronations and I want micronations to exist in the world because they just add some spice, you know. We've got all these giant countries and stuff and I'm, if Liberland becomes like an actual thing, I will totally go there and spend my tourism money there and check it out and stuff like that. But at the same time, I can't help but read this and just see through what's actually happening. It's basically the local government doesn't acknowledge its existence, which of course it doesn't, and they just see them as a bunch of like people who've come in and set up camp in a place where they shouldn't be and now they're throwing them out type of thing. Um, which also from their perspective makes complete and utter sense. They got some pretty cool renderings here of like the presidential palace. So I'm guessing this is where uh, old mate, uh, what's his name again? Zit? No, not Zit. That's terrible. No, I'm looking at the wrong, wrong one. Old mate Vit. Vit. This is where Vit's going to be living. By the way, that was not intentional. I'm not trying to insult the guy. Okay, concerning the li the boat Liberty. So here's another big international event that happens. So they've got this boat Liberty, which is why I say that Liberland is probably one of the best formed micronations out there. These guys have got a boat. Like the Hutt River Providence had some houses, some museums and stuff on. A museum was basically like a shed done up as a museum type of thing. Uh, but that was actually private property originally. So it wasn't like anything that was really built on top. Like they built a couple of little buildings and stuff. But these guys have got boats. They've got like on the ground activists basically, uh, which was that girl that we saw with the flag. She's basically an activist for the community. And like, they're, they're doing this. Like, they've, they're actually committing to this. It's not just an internet thing, which is what I, I love about Liberland. Like, it's not just some online community where everyone wants to be a president type of thing. Like, these guys are actually seriously trying to build something. But at the same time, everyone's just not taking them seriously, except for uh, people within libertarian circles. But again, I would be happy if these guys are fully successful. I'd totally go to Liberland. Maybe not on that boat, though. <laughs> <laughs> because apparently, I've read this article by the way, this boat got, uh, well, what it says, so on the 6th of order, the border crossing point was officially declared, making the commencement of the permanent settlement. So they set up their own permanent settlement, basically. Following this, approximately five individuals took up semi-permanent residence at Jefferson Square in Liberton, at uh, Liberland. So apparently they've got a square, which they're calling Jefferson Square. I don't know if like there's actually any like uh, stonework in place there, but who knows. While the border crossing point continued to be inhabited, facilitated by, facilitated me in my English, by the amenities provided by the boat named Liberland. So this is, this is obviously their supply ship. Okay, now, apparently, um, where was it says? Okay, so, due to escalating activities and growing list of priorities, the boat Liberton became, Liber Liberty became stranded for the first time. Immediately, efforts were made to organize a rescue operation. So Vit can contacted the Port Authority for assistance. So which Port Authority? Obviously not the Liberland Port Authority. I'm guessing it's probably like the Croatian Port Authority. And contrary to expectations, the Port Authority dispatched police and inspectors. Well, there you go. It's, it's definitely not theirs because they're not going to send police after their own. Uh, asserted the boat was in a deteriorated condition. Eh, it doesn't look too bad. Like, honestly, that does not look too bad compared to like anything you'll see in Tasmania. Issued misdemeanor charges against the captain, Martin, alleging uh, negligence charges were subsequently contested. So it looks like somehow they got their boat stranded and they called in, like, asking for support, probably from the Croatian or the Serbian um, port authority, who basically just issued them with tickets. 
because they're not recognizing them. Attempts at rescue were further complicated by police interference, resulting in the failure of the rescue operation. I like how they write this article. Like, there's two ways you could read this. Version A, some guy is driving his boat, called Liberty, he gets it stuck, he calls the police for help and he gets a ticket because his boat's in a bad condition and he doesn't know what he's doing. That's version A. Version 2, this is a sh presidential ship carrying the president of Liberland. It got stranded, they called for international support and help, and what actually happened was that they were assaulted by a invading military force who attempted to bring them under submission of that country. And unfortunately, they tried to send in their own rescue operation, but it was a complete failure. So now I'm getting like a mental image of, of like Navy SEALs coming in, like dropping from cables from helicopters coming in to help these guys. And then like there's a shootout on board and then you've got a Somali pirate type of thing taking over and... I don't know, this, actually, this has to be a movie. they got to turn this into a movie, okay? Again, I'm not mocking them. It's just the whole idea of micronations is both awesome but so stupid at the same time because of, like, the fact that it can. Like, they can become nations. Like, it has happened in history. But 99% of the time, it's never a success. Okay, arrests and deportation. So on the 7th of September, Vit, who's, by the way, the president of this micronation, Martin, who's obviously the captain of the ship, and Jan Urban, I don't know who he is, were arrested and subsequently deported for a period of five years. So they've been deported from their own territory. That's crazy. On grounds of national security. Ah, so what I'm guessing is... Uh, and it says effectively incapacitating our primary navigational personnel. So it looks like the president is also one of the primary navigational personnel of the ship. So maybe he's like assistant skipper or something like that. Um, and then it says Mr. Vladimir was subjected to a series of contradictory legal actions by Croatian authorities. Initially, he was penalized for failing to register uh, at an accommodation facility. So... Again, you can read this in two different ways. Basically, guy has boat. He didn't register his boat uh, acting like within that facility, being as a form of accommodation. Now he's getting tickets. Version two, they're being harassed by larger international actors. Subsequently, he incurred an additional fine for not being physically present at the registered accommodation. W what? You get a fine for not being at the registered accommodation? Like, how does that work? Maybe... Okay, so they got a fine for not being registered as accommodation facility, then got a fine as for not being at the registered accommodation. That makes no sense to me. Okay, I'm with Liberland here. This seems like some real deep political stuff. Okay, upon his departure from Croatia, a requisite step for the compliance of the aforementioned orders, so they were departed, um, Mr. Kavanik was issued a 30-day entry ban, so he's not allowed back for 30 days. Man, this is really a government in exile now. The rationale provided for this prohibi prohibition... I'm not even going to try that one. ...was the potential for committing misdemeanors and lack of justifiable reasons for entry. As far as we can tell, this is a case of guilty until proven innocent, which has no place in a rule of law-based country. Well, that's the problem. So what I think Liber Liberland needs is a military to defend its borders. See, this is one thing people like mock about like uh, countries having militaries. They're like, oh, militaries, you know, they didn't do anything, or border security, they didn't do anything. If they had a military, they could have fought off this international like attack. Then again, I don't think it would go down too well, some micronation pulling out guns, taking on the, the Croatian government. That, that, that would turn into like a cult status documentary in no time. But, just saying, maybe you guys need military. Although I did see that they had guards. Like, they actually hired guards. Oh, where was that? Was that... I didn't see that on this website. I think that was on LinkedIn. Give me a sec. Okay, I'm just looking at the, the profile link to the president here. Um, okay, let's have a see. Where is... Yeah, here it is. Look at this. Okay, so they've got... We are making all forestry and policemen personally liable for the damage in Liberland. We are gathering their identities and they will be sued for the damage in merits. Also through Croatia, Serbia, Czech Republic, Slovenia, Hungarian, German, American, Hong Kong courts. So they're going to sue them like in the international courts, man. This is something that's going to hit the hate for sure. They will have the chance to come and defend themselves in front of a jury in Liberland, Mario. Mat so they're actually saying that the, uh, you got to admit it, man. They've, they've got some cone ads on them. I didn't want to say the actual word, but what, what they're saying is that they've got some uh, strength behind them. They're saying, you got to come to our Liberland and we will sue you in our courts. 
even before this major court case, our Ministry of Interior already uh, processed two merit transactions for members of the Croatian police, chief of the police with account blah, and was awarded for letting our Deputy Minister of Interior, Daniel Bateman, go to Liberland without subsequently banning him from, um, that's the uh, Shenzhen, uh, it's like the European area of travel. Uh, so apparently they, what is this? He will receive 1,000 merit points for his friendly gesture. Whoa, merit points? Other chief is awarded 3,000 merit points for banning, no, minus 3,000 merit points for banning Daniel from Shenzhen for three months in the following day. Okay, what is this merit point system? I'm getting like some Orwellian vibes right now. So do people in like Liberland have like social credits? Okay, guys, we got to search this out. Okay, so here we are. We're on frequently asked questions. Let's go merit points. Okay, I don't want just an e-residency. I want full citizenship. We will open new citizenship application forms soon. The forms will be identical, blah, blah, blah. You can buy 5,000 Liberland merits required for citizenship if you don't have them yet. So you buy citizenship? I guess it is a libertarian country. It kind of makes sense. You know, everything's... For purchase why do i have to pay if i already have merits everything has a cost you are simply helping to cover the cost of production of your card okay if you have to collect five thousand liberland merits by working for liberland or donating so interesting you work for them you get merit points you can buy merit points internationally i'm guessing using more uh like well-known currencies or you can actually lose those. So what happens if you buy merit points and let's say you like annoy the president and then he like just deducts you merit points and what like those purchased merit points are out the window? I don't know about this. Like this is some, um, okay, well you can buy with PayPal. These guys are pretty, you know what? I give these guys credit because it is actually hard to get membership for UEA, which is the Universal Esperanto Association using like such a simple payment method system, just clicking like this. Um, through the website. Like, these guys are, like, straight up. You don't need to sign in or nothing. You can just, like, boom, pay. And they've got their crypto all there. So I thought they would have their own crypto coin by now, but I guess not. So citizenship. Let's go back to this. So to complete the application, you need to register or log in. Okay, so, well, I guess you've got to register here to get citizenship or opt for fast-track citizenship. Let's find out what's required. Uh, we have secured the free and legal access to our country. Also now, so here they're saying we actually have free and legal access to our country, which looks like they don't because they were just ejected from their, their country. So this is a country literally at war right now. You can find all the necessary information about traveling and selling in the travel advice guide. Let's go check this out. Okay, map with entry points. Okay, so they actually show you the entry points. So they got the Croatian border entry point just here. Let's zoom in a bit. Yeah, so we got the Croatian entry point just here. Okay, so I actually thought Little Land was like, oh, I thought it was that sliver sitting in the water, but it's actually quite a big piece of land right here. Okay, cool. And Jefferson Square is right there. I really want to see what Jefferson Square looks like. Little Land settlement updates and President Vitt's birthday. Uh, okay, what do we got? There's that boat again, so I'm guessing that's their main flagship. This is actually quite a beautiful render. This is what they imagined Little Land would look like but it's attached to a Fox News article about the president being arrested. So they do have a cryptocurrency. Uh, so this person is actually asking about Liberland Merit. This is from two years ago. And they're saying we're working on bringing it to an exchange. So it's actually going to be a cryptocurrency. But how, how will that work with them deducting Merit points? Unless that's a... I don't know how that would work. This must be separate to what I'm thinking. So I've just found a video. This is of the forestry. They're actually here pulling apart this um, shelter that was set up in Liberland, as you can see here. They've got like little Liberland seats everywhere and stuff. So they've actually got a bit of infrastructure that they've managed to build and the forestry are coming in and just basically tearing it up on them. Oh man, this is brutal. Look at this. They're, they're straight up chainsawing right down. They're just destroying it on them. Yeah, they must be an issue with some type of order that they need to get out of there. So it looks like all this um, stuff that was set up for Liberland is being completely just pulled apart on them. They're destroying it. Damn, that's brutal. Okay, 
but they don't look too worried. They're kind of just cruising around. I guess there's not much you can do when you've got the police saying you've got to get out type of thing. But anyway, that's my update at the moment for... Uh, oh, there we are. There's the there's the Verde de Papa or Flava Papa, I guess. I guess this is like the Titanic going down. He's, he's singing the last song as Liberland crashes into the ocean type of thing. Um, again, I hope they are successful in the end because I'll totally go check them out. I just wish they put Esperanto in their constitution. If they did, they would have had full support of Evil Deer over here. No. Uh, but that's pretty much it. I hope you guys liked this video, and we will check back in on Liberland, I guess, in a year or so. See you guys next time.